One of the most amazing things that we found was the change that people were able to create almost immediately. And I'd just like to probably call on David first. You knew I'd do this, didn't you? You did. Just because within the first half hour of the first benevolent capitalism class, David changed his point of view about society. And I'd just like him to share that a little bit with you about. So what did you, what, what was the big aha moment for you where you said, okay, I'm gonna do something? Well, I grew up in Austria, a socialist country where education is free, where uh, people who lose their job get uh, unemployment payment, $1,000 a month, where the whole society is based on the idea you have to help the poor people. Um, and I was actually my whole life grateful that I grew up in Austria because my parents would have never been able to afford university and for me it was for, it was for free. And I always thought that thanks to that system, I am who I am now, um, until that day I arrived in Melbourne. He calls it <laughs> that day. <laughs> I had my first conversation with um, Chutissa about uh, socialism and what contribution that is. And within an, an hour, 30 minutes, I actually got what that system really creates because the trying to help other people by giving them money stops them from creating. It's not a contribution at all. And I was stunned because for the first time in my life I actually got and could get it that it was my choice to be there. It was my choice to do it. And I was doing whatever it takes. And the fact that university was for free was just, it was just there. I would have chosen it anyway. So I actually got relief from the thought that I have to help others. So sometimes it's a greater contribution to the society to empower people and be an inspiration for them uh, what is possible and to truly help them by actually create the space where they have choice rather than limiting them by giving them little money and uh, avoiding choice and creation. So this is what totally turned around my world that I actually have the capacity to choose it independent of the situation where I'm in, that the outside situation like free university or getting payment from the government or this and that um, is not a contribution and it helped me finding out or look at people who really want to choose and people who are looking for excuses and from that day on I knew, and this is, this, is, this is so true for me now, everybody who wants to create and who, who says, well, the only thing that is missing is the money, they, they are lying, they don't want to choose it. They are just looking for another excuse. So it really helped me getting out of the, of the desire to help. The, the, the thing I'd like to point out here is it wasn't David Kubes, the lawyer, that got it. It was David Kubes, who happened to be a lawyer. <laughs> And I think that um, highlighted that, that uh, you know, when we talk about the word, the two words, benevolent and capitalism, are that the two words that have the most judgment in this reality. And people immediately would go into, well, I don't have a business, so I can't be a benevolent capitalist. I don't have, I'm not working in a big major corporate well, so that doesn't apply to me. And a lot of judgment is that capitalism is evil and horrible and terrible. How could you dare put the two words together, you know, to be benevolent capitalism? So, uh, so do you want to explain a little bit for people to know what that well, means? Well, one, one of the things is um, when Gary chose the words benevolent capitalism, we then did a little bit of searching around what does that mean. And benevolent comes from the words bene and volent, ancient Latin words, which if you're a Latin now, is probably still in use. The bene means for all, and the, volun the, the volant, which is where the word voluntary and so on comes from, volent, for the good of all. And capitalism was originally meant to be, and it was created to grow capital. And capital in those times meant cattle, to grow the herds of capital and cattle. So it's, it's really very interesting to see. So for the good of all, growing organically what you can grow. 
Now, why is it in Venice? Where did, where did business really start? Have you heard of the Merchant of Venice? Okay, that's the, so Venice is really the, the, the rootstock of our current mercantile system. And that's so one of the reasons why it was chosen as one of the, uh, as the venue for this next upcoming benevolent capitalism. But in all of this, it's nothing to do with business, it's everything to do with you. It's all to do with business and everything to do with you. So in, in looking at benevolent capitalism, it's a way of being with the world that creates exponential change in ways that you can't even imagine. Although, if you talk to David, he'll give you some ideas of it. And you talk to Susanna and you talk to pretty much the front row down here as well too, the change that it's created. When you say, um, sorry, <laughs> when you say it's uh, about you, can you talk a bit more about what that is? Because so often we, we say it's about the business, it's about the money, it's about the concept, it's about what you want to create. Can you explain more? Well, I'm just only talking from about me. It's, uh, it's a space of being that totally different from, you know, when I used to uh, talk about conscious leadership and all those sort of things. Benevolent, cap being a benevolent capitalist or embody and be the energy of benevolent capitalism is a space of being that it's a beyond this reality that I know as business. And since we started talking to Gary about this, I mean, our life just continue to expand and grow. And it's not the doing, it's a space of being. And what's so amazing about this class is he, Gary created a space for us to be that. And sometimes, even a lot of people who've been there not realizing that the change that they already have in their world, in their space of being. And a lot of people that we talk to actually embody and be the conscious and benevolent leader in their own life. And I think that's the class, what the class actually about me is I'm totally embody and be a benevolent leader in my own life, not it's about going in, trying to create a major business and, and, uh, and trying to change the world because that has been my thing. I want to, you know, world peace and yada, yada, yada. But it's just like once I became embody and be a fully a benevolent leader in my own life, I become the catalyst for different possibility wherever I go. So that, did that answer your question? One, of, one yes. of the exciting things is that for the first time, Dane is involved in this and he has a very, very different view on things as well, which is so damn exciting. Can't wait to have some of the conversations on stage with everyone, with Dane about his view. Um, we've already, we interviewed him a couple of days ago. You'll see some of this coming out on, on uh, multimedia on the YouTube channel. But just looking at what benevolent capitalism means from an energetic point of view, you know, yep. what it looks like from being a maestro, creating change in the world through the filter, through the possibility of benevolent capitalism. It's very exciting. The, f the first vid video that we're going to release of Dan talking about the aha moment he had uh, when the turning point for him to see that he is truly a benevolent capitalist, a, a benevolent capitalist, and he's embodying be it, it's shift and change everything, and it was wonderful. So once we have the video out and about, we will we'll, we'll post everywhere, and you can you all can watch it. So, uh, what questions do you have of us about what the heck this is all about? Yes, I have a question. Being a benevolent capitalist, does that mean that in your classes, looking to see how people are and showing them the being that they are, the capacities and the talents that they are, and bringing them to another level of being them and having these wow moments, would that be a benevolent capitalist leader? I think that's part of it, <clears throat> except the showing them how to. Yeah. <laughs> But I think, I think in all of that, the excitement that you had, for example, when you were talking about that as part of being that benevolent capitalist. See, in all of this, it's not about trying to work out the best way to do business. It's, it's actually how you choose to be with the world through the possibilities that being a benevolent capitalist shows. And the whole thing in that is the, it, it gives you a different, different way of looking at things so that 
whenever you do anything, everyone is both a contribution and is also contributed to. Yeah. And one of the things I've learnt just this week is that sometimes when I'm giving things, like talking to people, I'm actually not contributing to me. <laughs> and that's one of the big aha moments that I've got out of this whole conversation around being a benevolent capitalist. So that when, when, when you come along to this, uh, this workshop, this event, this class, this world-changing series of discussions, we'll, we'll be talking about areas that will take us into a totally different way of looking at how we choose to be with the world. And in particular, how we choose to be the change that the world actually requires now. And there's some cool stuff in there about business as well too. And what Gary said, that the earth is the only true benevolent capitalist and we are all that as well but m most of us, well, majority of us don't actually claim on and acknowledge that for ourselves and by being able to entrain ourselves with the earth and the benevolent capitalism energy of the earth, it can shift and change everything in our in in your life and in our life because um, you know it we we are, we can we all can be that and this class uh, the way Gary talks about things the way Gary's look at create the space for us to look at the world through totally different eyes it's create the the door open for us to actually claim that space of being a benevolent leader in our own life i'm just wondering susanna would you like to say a little bit about about that about what that happened to you uh for you uh not, not a testimonial you? just what changed what changed <laughs> um there was there was a lot of that changed after the benevolent capitalism class and it's it's what you talked about right now keyword the world um so um one of the things that we talked about after the class is um, I'm, like, when, I'm, when I'm creating this life form pragmatic psychology that we talked about a lot, it's, I, as a psychologist I was trained to, like, to be the surrogate for, for other people, to make them be better, and, and it's about healing other people, and it's like this, this very linear way of functioning. And what you showed me is... Um, like when you when you create something new, when you when you create something that hasn't existed before, whatever business it is or whatever life form it is, like what that showed me is that I have I can be a space where I can invite the whole world to engage and to play with me, where this can be so much bigger. It it's like this this playground between like it's about me, but it's not about me. And and it's it's so much bigger than just me. It's, it's about the whole world and whatever the world requires. So that was a big thing that changed for me. And, and um, with creating the business also, one thing that I loved about this class was um, when I grew up, what, I, what was shown to me a lot was that I have to be careful that when I create with other people that I'm not being used or abused, you know, like um, that I'm not taken from. And um, so this creates this paranoia in your world. We're like, okay, so if I, if I co-create co with other people, like this weird thing that we're taught in this reality, that I have to be careful, and, um, and which creates this separation and, and resistance and all that. And what I, what I learned from this class is like, to let go of that and to invite people and, and to, to let them learn and let them create with me where it's, where it's this two-way stream where I can show them what I know and they can show me what they know and together it becomes this explosion of possibilities and then I don't have to hold on to anyone. I don't have to keep the people that I have as, so to say, employees. I, we can create something together as long as it creates and then we can go our ways and I don't have to hold on, I don't have to create the point of view, oh my God, they have taken from me. But we have come together, we created something and now, now we can let go because we created something greater for the world. So, and that's yeah. functioning from a space of benevolence. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of people functioning from the space of give and take. Yes. But benevolence is gifting and receiving and we were talking about that to Gary 
also that now, after being talking about this for a while, we can see who's the taker and, and who's the giver. But when you are over giving some time, you're not being benevolent. And then that, She's looking that's looking uh, that <laughs> Steve is uh, love over giving. So we, we got to the point that when you're over giving, yeah. because we function in that space of uh, charitable and uh, what's philanthropic. philanthropic. So uh, over giving is, became a space. So, so when we actually start functioning from benevolent, <coughs> It's, it's totally shift and change how we create our business. Is there anything else that ring the and bell? It's, and it's this, like it's on micro level and on macro level. Like you can have this with every employee, but you can have this with your business as well as, as a whole org organism like Gary talked about today. You can today. have it with your family, you can have it with your kids. It's every it's area, yeah. 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 You can be benevolent capitalism as a benevolent capitalist as a mother, as a father. What Gary was talking to Shannon this morning was just uh, a straight demonstration of being a benevolent capitalist in action. Every single thing that he said and conversation when I thought, wow, that, that's benevolent, that's benevolent. So that's a space he's functioning from anyway. And it's, it's great to, to be in, in the workshop that, that we can be that as well. It's, it's really a rallying point for us, for all of us, to actually look at how we choose to be with the world. And it gives us, one of the really neat things is it gives you some language that you can then use with both yourself and others out there. And it gives you a way of looking at how others are and how you can choose to create change with both yourself and others. And there's some cool business stuff too. <laughs> I remember one conversation you guys had with uh, Shannon about a business and creating with people when you have people that work with you, mm. you educate them and then you've done that for a while, they get really great and then they leave you. They leave your business and go off working with somebody else mm. and then a lot of people are not happy about that because you invested in them. And I remember, I think Gary's response was, what if you always created um, and created with people so they become greater and take off and create greatness? What, so, what if you were creating the next future generation of leaders it's in everything you did? It's amazing. And also the old conversation about profit, where I was like, oh, you have to make my business more profitable. And I was like, wow, no, it doesn't have to be that way at all. So I was like crunching myself to create something that was great in this reality instead of really going beyond that where it's really fun to create. Mm. So it was, it's, yeah, thank it's you. It's always about maximizing possibilities. Yes. You are being benevolent, capitalism. Oh. I mean, I didn't attend the previous one, but I wrote the book, I follow, I follow you and all the hangouts that you did. And at the beginning you were mentioning Venice, right? With the merchant of Venice. But what I saw from the past that people were choosing, also how to build up cities, how to do, really do construction, they weren't looking for something that five years long, but really like something that will uh, fall long, yeah, sustainable, right? To have it for sustainable future. Sustainable future. Exactly. That's about. actually what we are no more doing in a way, right? So it's, um, I mean, I'm very excited because being a benevolent <laughs> leadership, so, and also what do you get? Being a benevolent capitalism inspire also to have this change, right? To create not a, a shorter terms, but much longer terms. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's about create sustainable future and sustainable reality for the planet and for the world and for ourselves. Uh, the thing, the, the, our tagline is, a better world starts with you and me and everyone, you know, so. So one of the other point we make is everyone is a benevolent capitalist. We just need to get out of our own way sometimes. And what we do as part of the, uh, the four days is to actually give some insights into how to get out of your own way and, and really unlock and unleash the benevolent capitalists that we all are, that we just try so hard to hide sometimes. So what questions do you have of us about either what is benevolent capitalism or what the heck is this class about? Can they know more about you too? 
Yeah. What What, what is your you background? Like? You, like to know. you know, because I I know about you, but probably a lot of people here they don't. Or okay, so potted version. I've been the CEO of five organisations. I've been the chair of boards of about four organisations. I've been the chair of the peak body of all organisations in Australia. Tutissa has been. Well, I've been working for um, like a major corporation in Australia, which is the same. If you're from US, is the um, what's it, the five com- what's five hundred Fortune five hundred company for twenty five years. And I think that's how the conversation started with Gary, because I kept saying there must be a different way of running business and being in business and being in the world. Because I have seen, I've been on that part of the, the, uh, the corporate world for 25 years, and I know that that's not generative, and it can't go on that way. So I think the other part of the equation is we've been married for 42 years. We actually like each other. <laughs> And about 12 years ago, we chose to leave the corporate world to set up our own, our own global business, and we've now got six global businesses, um, and if you buy us a drink, we'll tell you about them. I think but we started really. our own business. Uh, I, I came to Access before Steve, and uh, oh. about three years before or something, and one, uh, it was our 27th anniversary, and I went home, and I said to him, you know, there's these things that there's so many people uh, this uh, ruin their relationship after they've been together for 27 years, 28 years, seem to be a pattern there. And I learned something today about if we can destroy and create our relationship and our life every day, we can create ourselves and our relationship new every day. And Steve was really in allowance and willing to receive. And, I'm, I'm, and as, I'm as non-spiritual as you get. I have not done anything, nothing at all, but this just made total sense to me. I get to go to bed with a different woman every night. <laughs> and wake up with a different one every and day. Wake up, she's different yeah. again in the morning too. <laughs> so so you know, that went, we was 27 years of our anniversary, but we just celebrate our 41st. So this time and create work to be still together and happily ever after? No. <laughs> The other part of it is, is what we do is we actually travel the world working with boards, CEOs and a lot of organisations to create the possibility for them to see things differently. And when we need to, we throw in the word strategy or risk or governance or leadership, but it's actually all about choice, possibility, question and contribution, throwing in a few words that will get them to actually think that, you know, that they've got some sort of understanding of what we're going on about. But, but one of the nice things in the work that we do is that we actually know that we exponentialise change in the world by changing the boards of organisations because they create fundamental change in their organisations. So we like more bang for our bucks. We use access, access tools in our life, in our work, in our business. We don't actually pop and pot you know, when we go into the board meeting or anything, but we energetically always destroy and create and pot and pot stuff. So we know that uh, access to actually work at any level. And we don't, if you go on our website or read our book, we never actually hide anything about anything. So if people want to know about the tools, about access, about all of this, they can find all of that. And, and it, it surprised us sometimes that we go into something and like that guy said to you that he read all about what we do, all about access and want to know all about it and want to learn about it. So, so people don't actually think that crazy or woo-woo in, in that world if they're able to receive it. Those ones who don't ask and just ignore that it's, you know... It's not that, that's fine, but those one who truly can see the possibility and willing to receive it will ask about mm. things. Rebecca. I first want to say I can't count the amount of tools, changes, and conversations I have now instituted from the conversations with both of you, with the tools that you've shared online and through the amazing four-day class that we did. It was... It, I really can't count how many they are. Like, I was trying to think about 
all the different ones that I had, and there was too many. Um, I would like to know what surprised you the most about the previous benevolent capitalism class. Can you repeat that again? What surprised you the most, like about the class and what it created? The, the, the ability for people to change within half an hour. <laughs> I might have been one of those. You're yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, all, all, all the people are here from last class, definitely. It, it, I mean, David is the phenomenal. <laughs> he, his point of view changed every two seconds, not even yeah. 10 seconds. We, we love you all, but he's the poster boy of benevolent <laughs> capitalism. <laughs> So, so th th what surprised us the most was that some of the weird stuff we were talking about was no longer weird. It was just, ah, uh-huh. Um, the, the, the one thing that surprised probably us more the most was after benevolent capitalism going down 12 months, 18 months, two years, how some people chose not to change anymore. Yeah. Oh, well. That's one of the cool things about allowance is people choose what they choose when they choose it. It wasn't wrong, it's just so much more could have been available. Those that did choose differently, and each one of them has done it very differently, have gone on and have become powerhouses in the world. Mm. Very cool. And it's, a, it's a thing is, it's just not do the class and, yes. and, and you suddenly become benevolent later. It's a, it's a thing that you have to build the muscles and use the tool and be choosing to be that every and single moment yes. of your life and the key thing is the space that we get to to be that in that four days four days right four days yes. is, is, is amazing and it's just like uh, for us it still amazes us every day you know it's just like wow we are actually choosing to be that and we have to keep reminding ourselves to to be in that space and choosing to be a benevolent leader it's not something like you be once yeah. and you put it aside you, we just have to choose to be in every moment and one very wise lady once told me that benevolent capitalism started in every moment mm -hmm. um <laughs> and that was too to say um yeah. one more question i have for you we're now adding dane to the mix amazing we're I, so excited we're i'd so love thrilled. to know what, more about what your points of view and thoughts and excitement is on that you know, when the day that uh, we got the phone call from Dane and said that he said that uh, we are really choosing to be in the class, we saw so joy. It's just like we can see the change is even exponentialized when when Dane have chosen to be with with the class, right? It, it, what you've got is four very different points of view: Gary, Dane, Chitisa, and myself. All of them different but all with an understanding of what benevolent capitalism could be and is the promise of. And it's those different points of view that will come out in just amazing ways. And again, when you get a chance, have a listen to some of the interviews that we've done, in particular the new ones that were done only two days ago. You'll recognise those ones. They're the ones with cicadas in the background. Um, but, no, but you mean those one? With Dan, yeah. just here. Okay, that's the video though. For, for those of you who haven't heard the first seven uh, podcasts that uh, we've done with Dan and Gary, I would really invite you to download. They're on the app. On the app, or you can go and download the podcast and listen. You know, they, they're, just, they're just amazing. Uh, it's inspirational. I, I listened to them over and over again and I was there interviewing them. You know, that's one thing that I keep listening and I hear something new every time that uh, I listen. Go on the app. Yes, Paul. Um, guys, could you talk about um, the ease that you create with, um, because I know talking to Gary before, he just said you were sitting down having a beer and it was like it's that ease that you bring to situations and that you open and expand spaces with, um, because my experience with business is you're in front of board of directors, it's so fucking serious and ever you've got to deliver and it's all pressure, pressure, pressure. And it's, you bring a completely different space to it. If you could talk about that. And also if you could talk about the contribution that Gary is 
to the benevolent capitalism as well. I'd be really interested in both of those. Well, how could you not have an ease of creation if you around Gary Douglas? Let's let's face it. Basically, if you don't uh, if you don't have an ease of creation, it's just uh, about receiving because. Uh, for us, he just created a space for us to step up and be more. Every single moment that he asked, like even the castle, he just said, are you choosing it on the board, off the board? I mean, he, he just actually, he just created a space for you to create the choice. And it's the choice that, that, that he just said, here, take it or leave it kind of things, you know, and then you just go into, okay, of course, we choose it. Uh, we don't know what's going to look like, what we're going to create, but the answer would be it's so much more expansive and so much greater in our life to, to say we're choosing. So when he presented something, you know, it's not like we're not the yes people either. We don't you know, do it because of um, obligation or yes or, you know, uh, uh, fan club and things, but it just, uh, it just uh, every time he presented to us something, that, that choice, and, and we ourselves have to make that choice. And, and when you're talking about the ease, the ease is not always like, oh, it's going to be easy and it's going to come to fruition with total ease. We know that when you, the ease of receiving and the ease of saying yes to those choices and what else we have to be willing to create and generate from that space. And everything seemed to come together with ease anyway. And it is really easy. If you, any of you are in the corporate setting or working with corporates or working in any sort of organisation that doesn't know it's an organism, this sort of stuff makes your life a lot easier and everyone else's life a lot easier, which means you can charge an awful lot more money. <laughs> and he, he would talk about the business, the life, life. Last uh, class, we were talking about all kinds of amazing things that when people put into their own life and their own business, totally shift and change. And a few people here can probably, you know, affirm to that if you talk to them. Okay. Any other questions? Last question. Go, Wendy. Just a really quick comment. It was what I, for me, it's so different, it was such a different class than any other access class that I've ever done. And the finance and the business that you guys shared and gave us the knowledge about, that, you know, I, I've never, I've ne like business and finance and money and what to do with it, like I've never had that possibility of, of being able to ask those sort of questions. And that really was just wonderful. We just assisted so it's, much. I think, from memory, I think it's the only access class with Gary and Dane that has no prerequisites. Yes, actually, it's the only yeah. access In the class world. that In will allow everyone to come and play. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's that's very awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right then. Well, thank you, folks. We do you. encourage you to look at, if the very least, download the app. Um, have a look at the website, benevolentcapitalism.com. There's also Ben... What was the other one? Bencap.com. There, there are also Google Hangouts that we did two years ago. Yeah. Six Google Hangouts. They are free on YouTube, so if you want to listen and look at that, they're available. I think the, the ladies will let you know how to get to them. There are also all kinds of videos and also the uh, sound clouds yeah. about that. But if you are so new and so fresh with benevolence capitalism, I would recommend you listen to the to you to listen to the podcast, the six podcasts first, and then go into the Google Hangout. Um, and just one thing that we wanted to let you guys know <laughs> um, is the class is being live streamed. So you can live stream it from anywhere in the world. Also in Venice, we have 60 spots. So 60 people can come live, and it's already filling up quite quickly. So if you would like to come, please 
choose <laughs> and choose quickly because um, it's going to be in this beautiful palace so elegant and gorgeous and the room literally can only fit 60 people so if you want a spot we do highly recommend that you go ahead and register and make that commitment to you and your life all right thank you folks <laughs>